Happy Friday once again. It's Frank Rock. It's the House Foreign Sports Channel coming at you a little late tonight. Uh, but I, as I alluded to earlier today, I was not going to be able to do a live show the same need due to a prior commitment. But I uh, said I would have a post game recap later tonight. Tennessee is one game away from going back to Omaha for the third time in four years. They take care of business today, 11 to 6. And I'll be honest, that's a game to me that. Uh, yeah, Evansville made it a little tight later on, but uh, I think it was one that was a little, maybe a little worse than the score indicated today. People may disagree with me on that, but here's why I say that is, you know, Evansville got their first home run was the umpire was about ready to call a strike and he pulled back on it. Uh, that at bat ended up a home run. Now, don't get me wrong. You still got to make the pitch after. It was a terrible pitch that made it two to one. And then Stamos was jerked after him. We'll talk about Stamos here in just a moment on it. But then you had um, Christian Moore made the error later on, led to three unearned runs off of A.J. Causey. If that's the case, you take those away, this game's 11 to one. I know ifs and buts and all that stuff with it. But the bottom line is Tennessee wins 11 to six today. And I'm going to stick with what I've said the whole time. Tomorrow, when I go to do the live post game around, we'll say 2.30 to 3 o'clock, we're going to be talking about Tennessee on their way to Omaha tomorrow. It's just the way it is. We can, you know, people can make it out all they want to. Yes, Evansville's a good ball team. They're a scrappy. They're a good lineup and stuff. Tennessee's better. I've already seen, you know, had to. everybody worries about Tennessee's opposition. Tennessee fans are the worst about it. I've already said. Can't wait to see Link Jarrett and Florida State in Omaha. Cannot wait. It's going to happen. And and uh, people's already scared. Well, they've got this player. I don't care who they have. I don't care who any of them have. Tennessee's the number one ranked team in the nation with the best offense and one of the best pitching staffs in the whole country. If you're going to win it, you're going to have to beat the best on it. That's what Tennessee does. That's what Tennessee's going to have to do. You're not going to play. A bunch of number four seeds in Omaha. You're just not. You're going to have to beat the best to be the best. That's all there is to it. Let's get into this game today. A lot to like about it. Blake Burke with that solo home run in the first inning gets them going. Um, and then the offense, that one through five, particularly one, two, three, and five basically carried that lineup today. Now, Dylan Dryling did have a, have a walk and a run scored. But Christian Moore, one for three with two RBIs, had the home run. Blake Burt, two for four, two RBIs, had a home run, had a double, two runs scored. Billy Amick had a bomb, a massive bomb. He killed that thing. Uh, three for four for him, drawing over three. But then Hunter Inslee, three for four, a double, a home run, four RBIs, two runs scored. Awesome slide by Hunter Inslee earlier in the game to make it, what, 5-2? to two? Uh, Curly hit a shallow fly ball. I don't blame him at all for sending. You had to. The Evansville center fielder made a great throw. Hunter Inslee made a fantastic slide on that one. It was just, um, I've criticized Tennessee and their sliding uh, for the last few years, actually. They had a couple of slides at home, Hunter Inslee and Christian Moore both, that avoided tags got them runs. Hats off to them for that. Those were excellent on it today. Um, now, your bottom of the order lacked a little to be desired. They were um, 0 for 13. They did have the one RBI, and they had three strikeouts. Here's the stat I liked with Tennessee. We've, we've talked about this, you know, going back last weekend, going back to the SEC term, but today Tennessee only had one left on base. One. And they've had numerous games where they've had double digits. And that only seven strikeouts, which I don't think is that bad, one left on base. Phenomenal job by this lineup. That means they're basically putting the ball in play. They're making things happen with it today. And just, uh, you know, throughout the game, just a lot of big plays that happen. Tennessee's down two to one. Causey gets the strikeout on uh, Evansville's third place guy. Cal Stark with the back pick ends the inning. They come in. I think Chapman hit a seed. 
hit a hard hit ball. They were playing the shift on him, got him out. Cal Stark walks. Krista Moore, two run opposite field home run. Cannot stress enough what a weapon that is, being able to back pick the way Cal Stark does. Six on the year now. Every time it seems to fire this team up, it seems to be a big momentum boost. And at that point, it was Tennessee needed a momentum change because Evansville had taken that lead with them. Um, just what a weapon. What a weapon that is. And, you know, again, Cal Stark, he's not in for his offense. He's just not. He Anything he gives you is icing on the cake. Getting on base, he got a walk, had a run scored that got that going after he had the back pick today. But, um, you know, just heck of a job by him that gets this going. And then, uh, you know, again, your offense just, just took care of business. Getting your pitching staff. Talk about Stamos. One and a third. Two hits, two earned runs, three strikeouts. What a start, man. Come out, three strikeouts right out of the gate. And then it went to crap after that. He got one out, a couple of hits, a double, then the home run. Um, I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. I'm over the uh, Stamos as the opener thing. I, I, it's almost borderline insanity. And it's amazing to me how many times it's worked. Because I I don't know, man. I don't know. I I just, I don't know. I think there's better options. I think there's better options with that. And, you know, I, I almost think with Stam, I mean, we've had some outings where he's gotten two and three innings and done well. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I almost think it's borderline insanity because when he goes, that means you're going against the other team's ace for the most part. And um, I'm just afraid of it at some point getting them in a hole that they're not able to get out of. Fortunately, they got him out quick enough tonight, and Causey shut it down after that. But, um, I mean, the good thing, too, they are aware of it. They do get – have the kind of the quick hook when things go south in a hurry with, you know, a couple of batters. But the only problem is some of these misses are bad. They're bad. I mean, that pitch that was a home run was bad. Uh, you know, that same guy, it was Cal McInnes, I'm pretty sure, for Evansville. They – uh they played with fool's gold a little bit on that one, I guess you could say, and got away. He hit the one home run, got away with the one that hit the wall was not another home run. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm just about over the Stamos experience as the opener. It's um, I'm afraid if once – I'm just going to say once you get past this weekend, and I'm very confident in it just because I think Tennessee's better. That's all there is to it. You get to Omaha, though. Against Florida State next week, that's I think there's a pretty good possibility. That's who you're going to get in the opening game. Omaha, I know I'm putting the cart before the horse. All right, but let's speak theoretically. Theoretically, both teams take care of business tomorrow. You're starting with Florida State. That's a team that could put you in a hole quick if you don't watch it. And uh, we'll see where they go. I, I don't expect them to change it up at this point in the year. But um, I don't know, man. You, I think you got to be very careful and. The thing with Stamos is he gives up home runs. It's not so much the walks, the singles, things of that. It's home runs. That could get Tennessee in a bad place in a hurry. And A.J. Causey's been called on to bail him out numerous times now. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Causey went four and two-thirds, four hits, three runs, not a single earned run. Two walks, eight strikeouts. He did hit two batters. But, you know, another – Excellent outing from Causey. Kirby Cannell, two innings, three hits, one earned run, one walk, two strikeouts. Cannell's almost like Stamos in that I feel like if you get a good inning out of him, you're pushing it if you go longer. And I know they let Cannell go multiple innings, but uh, to me, he's an up-and-down guy. And Aaron Combs, man, a guy, you're talking about a guy that's not scared. A guy with ice in his veins. Comes in one inning, he did have a walk. Three strikeouts, shuts it down, lowers his ERA to 2.58 on the year, gets him out of a tough situation, and Tennessee's moving on to tomorrow with a shot to clinch the Super Regional and move on to Omaha, in which I think that they will as well. But, um, you know, again, a lot to like today with it. One down, one to go. We'll see what the Causey, um, what the Stamos experience, you know, the top five in the order. Last weekend, you had a game where the bottom carried the top, and people were saying, should we be concerned about the top? No. 
Should we be concerned about the bottom? No, it's just part of it. That's what I love about this lineup is they bail each other out. It's why I was adamant all year. Christian Moore leading off. You saw it today. You get to the top of that order with a guy on, what are you going to do? Whether are you going to pitch around him to pitch to Blake Burke? No. You got Christian Moore waiting at the top. What do he do? Two-run bomb the opposite way. It's 3-2 ball game. And Tennessee, um, now Evansville did tie at 5-5, five to five, but Tennessee never trailed again in that baseball game today. Um, you know, we look at it as well. You know, the pitching, they did their job. Who's going to be pretty much most of your guys? I mean, Causey, Causey won't be available uh, tomorrow nor Sunday, but Canell, I mean, he could throw every day if he needed to. I'm almost more apt to go Banky, though, if it's me and a lefty. Combs will be available. He threw 20 pitches today. I would think if needed, Nate Sneed will come in tomorrow. What you're looking for is Drew Beam, QB1. You're looking for basically your ace, your main guy. You're looking for him to get into late into that game tomorrow. And the thing they have to do is just be careful. Be careful with challenging Evansville's top guys. All right? We've seen it. This They got challenged a little bit today and, you know, made Tennessee live hard. Beam, you know, we get to good beam tomorrow. Six, seven innings, let Combs, Sneed, Banky, whomever, close that thing out. I think we'll be in good shape tomorrow. Uh, Evansville's pitcher at school tomorrow. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but five point like eight one eight four ERA tomorrow. That's a recipe for disaster for Evansville tomorrow. I like Tennessee again, five plus runs tomorrow. I like Tennessee to go in that one tomorrow. And then a uh, little update. I had a video earlier. I'll link it at the end here for you talking about visitors this weekend. One of Tennessee's visitors I saw did not make it in. That was Cody Bowker from Georgetown. Apparently he uh, canceled his visit and committed to Vanderbilt today. So he's looking forward to getting smoked by Tennessee for at least next year, if not longer than that, depending on the eligibility left. But uh, uh, the other three guys, uh, Keelan, Gavin Keelan from Louisville, Lapore from Wichita State, and uh, Sick from Miami all made it in this weekend. All those are pretty nice prospects. All those would be big time to get. And uh, you got to think Tennessee is going to be going further into the portal with more more positions to fill. Of course, you got to, as I've talked about numerous times, account for the draft, and you got to account for transfer portal guys as well, because both's going to happen. It, it's inevitable. That's going to happen. But um, I hope you will join me in the morning, 10 a.m. We're going to do a live pregame. Um, I don't know what you want to call it. We'll call it a, you call it a tailgate. We could call it a, a hype party. We could just call it House of Orange Saturday morning uh, pregame, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to be on here 10 a.m. We'll go to about 1045. Game time's 11 a.m. tomorrow. I think I saw ESPN 2. Is that and then uh, post game tomorrow, right after it, where uh, I do anticipate on celebrating moving on to Omaha next weekend. Not being cocky, not being overconfident. It's just the fact that this team to me is different. This team to me, they're pretty even kill, but at the same time, you don't want to, you know, stir the hornet's nest if you're the opposing team. This is not that cocky in your face team like two years ago. And, uh, you know, that team that when they got punched in the mouth couldn't take it. This team can take it. They get punched in the mouth and they punch back even harder. Uh, I just like the makeup of this team. I think this team's on a mission. And um, I, I'm really feeling this is the year for Tennessee baseball. I'm feeling this is the year that we finally get that championship. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely. There's a long, long way to go. And I'm not by any means guaranteeing it. I'm just I'm feeling really good. I really like the makeup of this team and what they're able to do. But uh, I hope to see you first thing in the morning, 10 a.m., grab you a cup of coffee. If you want to have a day, have a day. Start it off, bring you a cold one at 10 a.m. and have a day, my friends. But uh, my name's Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel. Last but most certainly not least, go Vols. <laughs>